Well, the polls led a lot of people to think that Graham would beat Gillum and that Clinton would beat Trump and that Moore would beat Jones and that Baker would beat Christman. The list goes on and on. But we saw something in the polls that made us think Gillum could beat Graham and led us to call it for Rick Christman when he was trailing Rick Baker. Prediction, uh, Mayor Christman will win a very close one. And call it for Doug Jones in Alabama when he was trailing Roy Moore. Prediction, Doug Jones will pull an upset and win the race in Alabama. And call it for Trump five days before the 2016 election when the polls had him trailing Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College. Quite frankly, my gut tells me Donald Trump will win the state. So I want to explain some of what we saw to buck conventional wisdom and explain why poll numbers can miss and how they can also be more revealing than you may think based on how you read them. Let's start with the part that fools people, not just here in America, but all around the world. It's been a bad night for the pollsters. Yeah, in 2015, the polls missed badly in Great Britain and in Greece and in Israel. Then in 2016, the numbers missed on Brexit and Britain. And closer to home, of course, they missed over and over again from the Florida Democratic race for governor to Kentucky's race for governor, where Matt Bevin trailed in the polls and then won. Also in 2014, Eric Cantor's polls gave him a 34-point lead, and he got hammered. They also recall they also showed Mitt Romney leading President Obama in 2012. Man, you definitely got Romnesia. Well, here's the first big thing to remember. Numbers from phone-based polls can be inaccurate. With caller ID, a lot of people just don't answer their landline phones, and that leaves the pollsters with declining response rates and sometimes oversampling one group over another. They don't know what the turnout mix will be, and with shifts in technology and population and culture, their turnout models can be and often are wrong. If you look at all the polls and try to find the mean average of them, I think more often than not, you're going to be wrong. Political strategist Adam Goodman is right about that. Numbers from poll to poll can peg up and down like an EKG machine. The most important thing about polls is where are things moving as opposed to where things are. And there's the second big thing to remember. The campaigns and analysts don't focus on the top line numbers. They use polls to track movement. The numbers don't matter as much because we know how horse races can shift. The key to reading polls is to look beyond who places first and second and third on any given day and follow the movement of the numbers from week to week. You match the numbers from polling firm A to polling firm A from week to week. Track the numbers from polling firm B to polling firm B. And if you compare apples to apples in that way and you track the shifts in the movement, it'll show you who's really taking off and how much he or she is accelerating. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at that Kentucky race for governor that showed Matt Bevin down five points. He wound up winning by more than eight points. The Washington Post asked in a now familiar type of headline, why were the polls so wrong? Well, if you take a closer look at the shift, the polls there certainly tell a very different story. The solid lines chart the poll numbers, and then the dotted lines show the actual results. People who look past the numbers and keyed into the movement may not have been so surprised by the end result. Here in Florida, the same can be said of Andrew Gillum's win in the Democratic race for governor. The polls and the St. Pete polls numbers for Florida politics in particular showed significant and rapid gains for Gillum in a five-way race. And that is the last thing to remember. If a candidate is within striking range and accelerating near the end, that's one you may want to watch.